One of the key ways to improve the way you sound when you sing is to improve the way you pronounce the words that you're singing. And we're going to explore that a little bit in depth today by looking at the International Phonetic Alphabet, or IPA, which is a system of symbols that represents all the possible sounds that we could make when we're putting words together. And we're going to look at the ones that are ideal for making our best sound. It sounds a little complicated, but it's really pretty simple when you break it down. So let's start with that vocabulary word phonetic. The dictionary definition says, of or pertaining to speech sounds, their production, or their transcription in written symbols. That sounds complex, but if you think about some words that you may already know that already have P-H-O-N in them, like telephone, phonograph, phonics, homophone, you'll notice that the thing that they have in common is that they're all about some kind of sound. Telephone is something that sends the sound of your voice. A homophone is a word that sounds the same as another word. The simple definition of phonetic is that it's relating to sounds of words and the sounds that we put together to make words. So when we're talking about phonetics, we're talking about words and their sounds. That's it. Pretty simple. So the International Phonetic Alphabet is a group of symbols that represent the sounds that we use to put words together. And here are some examples of them. This is an IPA symbol that represents the sound sh. This is an IPA symbol that represents the sound zh, which is a weird but really fun sound, zh. And then this is an IPA symbol that represents the sound uh. Pretty simple. Notice that the brackets are always around these symbols. These square brackets are what tell us that these are IPA symbols. They are not letters. They are not some other kind of symbol. They are distinct. They are IPA symbols, and the way we show that is by putting square brackets around them. You must remember that. You also have to remember that our focus is sound, not spelling. So we're talking about symbols that represent the way a word sounds, regardless of how it's spelled when you write that out. And you'll see why that's important in a bit. Here's an example. Here is an English word. It has four sounds in it. B, A, D, J. When you put all of those together, the word you get is badge, like a name badge. Notice how different the word looks when it's spelled in our actual letters versus how it's transcribed with IPA symbols. So we're talking about, with IPA symbols, the way the word sounds, regardless of how it's spelled. There are two basic kinds of sounds that are featured in IPA. One is vowel sounds, which are more open sounds. Sounds such as a, e, i, o, u, e, etc. If you make those sounds, you'll notice that your mouth is pretty much open while you're making them, which is why I refer to them as more open sounds. The opposite of vowel sounds are consonant sounds, which are more closed sounds, such as ch, sh, f, s, m, mm, n. Mm. If you make those sounds, you'll notice that some part of your mouth has to close in order to make them. Maybe you need to put your lips together, or you put your tongue on the roof of your mouth. Some kind of closure that helps you to make that sound. For today, we're actually just going to focus on vowel sounds, and we have five of them that we're going to focus on. So now, if you look at the worksheet that you've been given, at the top there is a blank paragraph, or rather a paragraph with some blanks in it, and now that we've covered this basic information, we should be able to fill in those blanks on your notes, so let's take a look. IPA, which stands for International Phonetic Alphabet, is a system of symbols signifying all of the possible vowel and consonant sounds. IPA symbols look like letters in brackets, but please remember they are not letters, they're different. For now, we are focusing on five major vowel sounds. So we're just going to focus on five basic vowel sounds that are going to help us sound our best when we sing. So let's get right to it. Here is our first symbol. It looks pretty much like a lowercase a, but here's something important to note. Different people who have different handwriting write their a's different ways, but that's not going to be acceptable in this case. 
this symbol has to look just like that. So maybe you write your A's a little different, but when we're talking about this symbol, you need to write it this way. This symbol represents the sound ah, as in box, tall, pop. As I mentioned before, we're talking about the sound, not the spelling. Notice, for example, that the words box and pop have O's in them, but they don't make an O sound. They make an ah sound. So we're focused on what they sound like, which means that they'll be associated with this ah symbol and not with any other. Here's our next symbol. Looks kind of like a backwards three or a cursive E. This symbol is the symbol for the sound eh as in bet, bread, pet. All of those words have the eh sound in them, despite the fact that they're spelled a little differently. Bread has an e and an a in it, but it's pronounced bread with that eh sound, so you're going to associate it with this eh symbol. Here's our next symbol. Looks like just a regular old lowercase i, but remember it's in brackets and it's not a lowercase i, it's separate because it's an IPA symbol. This symbol represents the sound e, as in see, leave, peace. Again, we're talking about the sound, not the spelling. Those are three different ways to spell that e sound, but they're all going to be represented by this e symbol. Two more symbols to go. Our next symbol is the O symbol. So it looks like our normal lowercase o inside brackets, and it represents the sound o as in go, so, to. You'll notice probably that I'm pronouncing that in a way that may sound a little funny to you. That's because when we're singing, we're going to want to make our vowel sounds as pure and polished as possible. So even though to your friends you wouldn't say go, you'd say go. But when you're singing, it's going to be really important to say go. That's going to make the most pure professional sound. Once again, we're focused on the sound, not the spelling. The word so has an E and a W in it, but they together make that O sound. So they're going to be associated with this O symbol, even though the letter O isn't in there anywhere. One more symbol to go, and it looks like a lowercase u in brackets, and this symbol is the symbol for the sound U, as in you, flu, and zoo. Once again, you can hear me pronouncing those as purely as possible. Not you, but you. Not flu, but flu. Once again, sound, not spelling. There's that EW again, except this time, instead of making the O sound, it makes the OO sound. So when you're considering what symbol goes with a word, you really have to hear that word in your head and consider what sound it makes, regardless of how it's spelled. So those are our five basic vowel symbols. If you look on your worksheet again, in the middle, you have a table where you can list all five of those and the basic information about them. So let's do that quickly. The first symbol we had was this one. That is the symbol for ah, as in father, is a good example word. Our next symbol, the backwards three, or cursive E, represents the sound eh, as in bed. The next symbol looks like a lowercase i, but it's actually e, as in c. Next symbol is o, as in go. And the last symbol is u, as in Zoo. So that gives you the basics about each of those five vowel symbols. It's important that you write them correctly. This is the symbol for ah, and it has to be written this way. You can't write it that way. That's wrong. That's the wrong kind of A. You also can't write it that way because that's not even IPA. That's just trying to write out the sound using letters. Remember, IPA symbols are separate from letters. They're different. You also can't write it this way because that is missing the brackets. We have to have the brackets to show that it's an IPA symbol. Same thing if we look at the symbol for eh. Don't write it either of those two ways. That's the wrong symbol. You have to use that kind of backwards three symbol. And don't write it that way either because, once again, that's missing the brackets. Same thing for our remaining three vowel symbols. You've got to write them the correct way. Don't get them confused with any other symbol or any other letter, 
and definitely never forget the brackets. You've got to be very specific and very careful that you write these the correct way. Before we move on, let's make sure we understand some of the key points from this lesson. Number one, what does IPA stand for? It stands for International Phonetic Alphabet. Number two, what are the five IPA symbols you've learned today? Well, you should have them there on the paper in front of you. There are the symbols for A, E, I, O, and U. Number three, why is it important to include brackets? The brackets are important because they show us that this is an IPA symbol and not a letter or some other kind of symbol. So that's really important. There's one more thing to note on your worksheet. You have one more table at the bottom that's blank. And here's what you're going to do with that as a little homework assignment. In the table at the bottom, I want you to rewrite all five of the IPA symbols that we learned in this lesson today. And then in that open space next to each symbol, I want you to come up with three example words that include that sound. And I want you to come up with new words. So don't use any of the words that were presented as examples in this lesson. Come up with your own example words that include that sound. So three example words for each IPA symbol, which means a total of 15 words, three in each box. If you're confused about how to do this, remember, you can always rewind this video and go back and watch a section again to see if that will help you to understand the concept. If that still doesn't help, which is okay, if you have a question, write it down so you can remember to ask me to cover that in detail in class.